to another day of Dose of Did You Know? And I'm already giggling and laughing. And I'm here with my beautiful, amazing friend from the West Coast. And I haven't seen her face live in so long. Miss Raquel, how are you this morning? Fantastic. Hello, East Coast. <laughs> We are rainy and cloudy here, and I can tell from your window it is sunshine and beautiful as always. Actually, this is very strange. It is the probably fourth or fifth day in a row. It's been um, a little chilly and foggy throughout the day, which is not normal here in no. LA. No, this, that's where I go to like get my sunshine and sit on your rooftop and just yes. love. <laughs> Our famous rooftop that everybody just like hangs out at. It's now become our gym. Yes. <laughs> uh, the best gym. Okay. You got to go on to her page and scroll and find pictures of this rooftop because then you'll see and understand my obsession. <laughs> it's just a small obsession I have with Raquel. Raquel is one of those individuals that when you meet, um, you can't help but fall in love with her. That is exactly how it happened. We happened to wear red. I love that red's my favorite color. We both wore red. I was like, hey. <laughs> and, uh, and it was love at first sight. And that, that was it. Um, she's also one of those people, like I, I just have to tell these stories because when you hear them, then you can understand. So we met in New York City at an event stayed connected. And I think I said, Hey, I'm coming to the West coast in three months. So I don't even really, we don't even know each other. Really. We know people. We don't know each other. And she's like, Hey, come and stay with me. Friends ever since I did. I showed up <laughs> at her doorstep. She picked me up and that was it. So when you can make plans with somebody that you don't know, and three months later, they are, you know, actually fulfilling those plans. you got a, you got a good, a good seat on your hand. You know, just so, to let everybody here know, that is very, very Danny. <laughs> it's like your newest best friend to everybody. She really, is. Um, you know, and then it says something too, when uh, you first meet somebody and you feel enough trust in them to um, say like, share like your deepest, deepest thoughts. And that's the way Danny and I were. So um, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Well, it, it goes here, you know, it's, it's one of those, but okay. So that talks about, I mean, this is about love, life and entrepreneurship. And if the story, the story of how we met and how we became friends and so close doesn't just tie that with a bow around who you are. And uh, I don't know what else is, but Tell us a little bit about Raquel in a snapshot. Who is Raquel Sanchez? Um, you know, one thing I've learned is that um, a part of who we are, whether or not uh, we know our cultural background that much, who our great grandmother was or great, great grandfather, great uncle, they are really, truly a part of us. I never realized that. And I think I mentioned on social media that I've been obsessed with um, the show um, Chef's Table. And I don't binge watch it like I stay up all night and watch like four or five episodes or 10 or 12, which I've done. <laughs> like <laughs> but um, uh, the reason I love it is one, because I have that passion for cooking, but the real reason is in the storytelling. And in the storytelling, it's more than about food. It's about um, your identity. And my identity, whether I knew it or not, since I was raised in um, the States, a lot of that Filipino culture is in me, you know, and, um, and the history of it, and also the neighborhood that I grew up in. So for instance, in the Philippines, my family was a very well-known prominent family. My grandfather um, designed the uh, capital of the Philippines. There's a street named after him. We were like my maid, one of my maids uh, tried to lose me a couple times at the marketplace. And um, 
you know, I just dropped my name and they were eager to bring me back because they knew probably they were going to get a reward. But then when we moved to the States, life changed because then we were nobody. <laughs> you know? So um, that's what I struggled with. And also like the adapting to a different culture and not really feeling truly accepted. And there's also that part of me where, where the part of my culture was, um, I hope my mom's not watching, <laughs> but you know, um, in the Asian culture, the, uh, it's, uh, like very light of skin is, um, you know, admired. So as the second daughter, being dark of skin, I don't, you know, I don't know if people understand like being brought up that way. Like, no. you know, um, there's such a, and in our culture too, it's so the parents openly show their favorites, you know? I so, didn't know any of this. Yeah. And it's, it's part of who I am. So I've always like tried to compensate. It actually uh, benefited me because and growing up, I'm like, okay, so I'm not, you know, the the pageant queen. I'm going to become the best dancer. I'm going to accelerate in academia, you know. So that's that's who I am. <laughs> that wow! I some of those some of those pieces that you were talking about, I didn't realize. Huh? You learn something new every day, and now that makes sense. I mean, you are such a giver. I, okay, opening your home to a basic stranger, <laughs> um, and even through this quarantine, you've been out giving in in your community. Um, you know, making masks, and I, I mean, I'm watching these posts. You guys go before the quarantine. You would go into Skid Row once a month, and you feed and you bring your whole community with you. Yes. It's not, you know, you go big and you go large when you go when you give. And that kind of makes sense. Do you feel like because maybe you weren't the favorite because of those circumstances growing up, part of your excelling not just wasn't a dance and your mind, yes. but you want you don't want anybody to feel that way. Yeah. Um, it, it gave me a lot of empathy, you know. So um, I remember when I was younger and I dated this guy and he was big success. And he's like, what's your superpower? And I said, um, you know, that I'm kind. And he's like, oh God, that's a terrible answer. Awful. And I was young and I was naive and I took that at face value and I let him make me feel less than. And then somewhere along in life, I learned it's really something amazing to have that compassion. So yeah. That's how I am. Um, whatever, wherever I go in life, I know that what will define me is what I can contribute to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't yeah. see face value. You see much deeper into a person, yeah. you know, whether they're on the street or they have a ball gown on. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The, <laughs> the gruent across the board. Um, well, should, is, there was this one event, Danny. Um, yeah. where uh, we had a Beverly Hills event and I was still at home, stuck at home working, what, making that event still happen as it was going. Kind of like what we're doing right now with the <laughs> coronavirus, like we're we're building the plane as we're flying it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So so that's how that event went. And Was that the Beverly Hills, Hills event that I was at or a different no, one? No, no, it was a different, oh, one. different one. Okay. So, um, Anyways, my stylist was there, my gown was there and everything. I just had to get there. So I was in my pajamas and a baseball cap. <laughs> I was like avoiding all the cameras. <laughs> like, like going past the pap paparazzi or whatever it is. Just like, yeah. get me, get me. Oh. <laughs> I love that. That is kind of you. You're just like, you gotta make, you gotta make stuff happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever. So tell me a little bit about how Kiss the Monkeys, Kiss the Mermaids started, because it's obviously came from this place of 
love and compassion because that's how you are. And I think that's what defines your events and your community. And I always think when I say you do these award-winning events and all of this, it doesn't, it doesn't give it the right amount of description behind it. Um, but how did this come about? How, first of all, the name, I love how you came up with the name <laughs> the story of that. Cause it is your love. It is who you are. So Kiss Monkeys, um, well, we weren't sure what we were going to do. We knew that we wanted to have a net. We, Alex had a big network from New York and myself from Chicago. And we were thinking, you know what? We're older and uh, our age group, you know, dating is a big thing now. So um, maybe we'll, we'll start a network of people where they can meet as singles and blah, blah, blah. So that's how where the kiss came from. Um, the monkeys part is um, that was my term of endearment for my daughter. So I wanted to, I've always wanted to name my, I knew I was going to have different businesses as I grew up and I knew I wanted to name one of them for her. And Alex has two children, but I didn't tell him the motivation behind it, but I, I did let him believe it was his idea. <laughs> the secret's out now. <laughs> it's been out. It's the number one question, but yeah. it's, you know, that's how us uh, women can, uh, manipulate and <laughs> yeah, we have our 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 way. Way. <laughs> let them think it's their idea. <laughs> and then how did it morph into, so we have this, but it's not, it's not now where singles can mingle and get, it's turned into something. It's, uh, oh, I, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, so what it is, it's it's a network of entrepreneurs, artists, uh, very eclectic crowd. And then we draw, we drew in nationally and internationally. Um, well, internationally because of Alex's um, uh, tie-in with the UK and mine to the Filipino community. When I was younger, a few years before I moved to New York and then here, um, a few friends and I gathered when the uh, typhoon happened in the Philippines, Haiyan, and we put a drive together and we um, made local news. They camped out every day for like over a week, almost two weeks to see what we were doing. Um, one of my friends actually had to stay there overnight because we had so many donations. We started with a donation of one container and I can't remember if it was like 13 or 18 containers. We eventually ended up sending to the wow. Philippines. So it was incredible. We were in all over the news, you know, um, the Senate, we were brought up to the Senate cause they were trying to get us, um, uh, what is a C-13 plane or uh, I forget the, the big cargo plane. So yeah. <laughs> perfect. I know what that is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, um, uh, sorry, my ADD is getting to me. That's okay. Um, the container, the plane that you shipped uh, off. So, all so, so what, what Kiss the Monkeys and Kiss the Mermaids is about is that um, that whole, like, you know, um, the, the network of philanthropists that we have, it's all about giving back. What can you do now that you've reached a certain level or you want to reach a certain level? How can you, how can your life, what is your life legacy and how do you get that? And I always feel it's in, it's in giving back. Like I said, in the beginning, it's in, how can you serve others? It's <laughs> so true. So many people think serving means money or I don't have that, that financial thing. So, you know, they throw their hands up and they walk away, but it's so much more than that. It's, you yeah. know, a kind smile. It's, you know, giving just something small that you have around the house or your time and your effort. Um, there's so many other ways of, you know, going about it. So now with all of this. Make a note on that though, yeah. too. Uh, there, there's a dear friend of ours. Her name is Bobby Chant. She's an acting coach. She, you know, mentored um, Brad Pitt, Jennifer Aniston, Scarlett Johansson, all the biggies, Ryan Reynolds. And she always tells her class, um, don't wait to be famous to be um, a philanthropist. Start right now. Mm. You know, so it's a part of you. So it's authentic. You know, yeah, that that is that is the truth. You can't people 
that's a great point that so many people wait till they're they've achieved whatever it is x yes. before they start doing anything and then it's yeah. kind of like gosh are you doing it for selfish reasons or are you doing it for pure reasons right exactly there's that balance of it so what does it look like now i mean oh my god kind of you know changing what are we what well, are we going to here i i was just beginning to do a digital marketing business and also um, with PR, you know, website development and all that. And I think because of the timing, because we were connecting it to our events. Once we had our events, like the designers that were starting to come on said, oh, you know, I just did my event. That's newsworthy. So we had something to create news. Um, so I think it's like the timing. I feel terrible for these like businesses that were just in the onset of just, you know, opening up and um, expecting it to happen. And then the pandemic hit us. So that right now I'm still building. And I kind of like that because this way I can really build a great foundation. I'm doing that with one of my friends that helped me with the help for high end um, and his team in the Philippines. Raymond, I hope you're listening. I don't know if you guys are even awake over there right now. <laughs> but yeah, I, I um, so, but on the other side of that, we don't know because we don't know what's happening. We don't know when we're going to see the next Dodgers game. We don't know when, you know, um, when we we get to go to a different, con a new concert and how it's going to happen. So um, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see, but you know, I'm, I, it's also a great time to figure it out, right? <laughs> God, I, I'm telling you, Terry over here, Terry Ann, she was like, you need a kiss the monkeys uh, Zoom, like a Zoom party. Ah, yes, <laughs> you know what? I just saw, I saw your name, but I didn't, <laughs> she, I saw her, that she texted me. I love you, Terry. Thank you. Thank you for helping us distribute the mask out to your nurses. You're so wonderful. She's she is a, a beauty. Talk about a beauty. Um, she's a, she is the pageant queen that gives back. Um, it's funny because she walks our red carpet and when she's not working or, or when she's not a guest at our uh, red carpet. I see her at other events volunteering. She's an amazing lady. <laughs> I'm sure I'm just with now, I gotta, now I'm going to have to go stalk her and introduce myself because... <laughs> Now I want to know. I want amazing people around me. I want always have people that inspire and you know I can look up to. That, yeah. that is that is <laughs> that is what well, all of it. Sorry. <laughs> so I, amazing. you know, I want to take this time to like figure out all these things. Like you know how Zoom just like uh, spiked up. Yeah, and, and this time also. Um, for instance, my niece is pregnant and we're doing uh, her baby shower online through Zoom. Before, you didn't c connect with your family, you know, overseas or whatever. And now you can and or you you have a reason to. Right. Before you get it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm learning things like that, like TikTok, the Zoom. What what can you do to connect, you know, when you can't? do it face to face. So. Do you think that maybe you will during this time take some of this new development like Zoom and you know those yeah. other those other platforms and kind of morph it and blend it into react like real events because my biggest fear is that I'm going to people are going to get so comfortable with this new form of communication that we're going to lose the touch and feel of actual people and I need people like this is great but I need to like hug people I need to give them a kiss I need to not live in fear so where is this where do you see this this balance because literally that's my biggest fear that we're going to turn into one of those sci-fi movies with <laughs> brown army that's fighting against like technology yeah I know it's funny because it you know um Ted Kaczynski's manifesto is kind of like <laughs> happening. But um, yeah, I, I think that's part of it. You know, the imbalance in, in nature um, brought us there. But touching and hugging, that's a 
a real basic human need. So mm -hmm. I think when we get out of this and when we know that it's safe to, I think we're going to cherish that so much more. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can't wait to see my daughter in Chicago and like hug her breathless, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think we <laughs> definitely appreciate instead of it just being just like a thing you do, mm -hmm. it's going to be the thing that you appreciate, you know, yeah. that hug, that snuggle, that, you know, whatever, whatever name it is. But yeah. maybe in your new adventures that you have going on, maybe you can start developing that there is a concept because since I'm East Coast and you don't always get to this one, and the one time you did, I was in East Coast, <laughs> I was like, are you flipping kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> that my backyard. Nice. I'm in yeah, yours. I blame you for that because we did have to change the date a few times. Yeah, I was like, so <laughs> was <not> right. <laughs> I oh. needed to see my Danny. <laughs> no, and it was missed. But maybe we there's some kind of balance that you know, because the monkeys can start having where there is the real live, but then there's also um some way to make it where from afar we can have our own house party but we're at your party does that make you sense know, yeah absolutely you know i wanted to start doing a girls night night out online because uh i've been doing things that i haven't had a chance to do all the girly things like put on masks and try different recipes and things like that so I, I wanted to get together with some of the mermaids and, um, you know, just talk about that. I had like a, a stockpile of products that people gave me, you know, as an influencer to try that I haven't gotten around to doing. But um, now I'm like, wow, this is neat. <laughs> you know, I have this skincare line that um, Prince Mario Max uh, gave me like over a year ago. And I finally had a chance to like, break it out, you know, and I'm like, oh, this feels luxurious. So. Right. <laughs> Love it. And the cool thing is people are home, so you could do it like at three o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. That's when I'm starting to, you know, pop my corks. <laughs> yeah, same it's here. Fun. I'm like, is it too early? I don't think so. I got nothing else going on. <laughs> What's early? What day is it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I wake up all the time and I'm like, Sometimes I am in a state of confusion of what day it is. And it's not like I'm not doing anything, but it, there's right. no structure to what I'm doing. So yes. Saturday, Wednesday, yeah, you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> I think I think that artist in me likes the um, lack of structure. <laughs> I, I, I can say, uh, yes, that is definitely <laughs> your world. So I think um, <laughs> that you should definitely start doing it, girls. After late afternoon, <laughs> girls' night out online. Yes, like, <laughs> like three o'clock before dinner or whatever. Yeah. And um, I'm in. I'm in. Let me know. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Right. You can put your masks on. We can do whatever it is. And and I know, and, right? And let the guys like anonymously just watch women be women. <laughs> This is what it's really about. And there are guys that like that stuff, the masks and things like that, you know, so they can, they can join in, but you don't know. The you can have Rocco right. on there. We don't wake up like this, or at least I don't, you know, <laughs> stuff that happens here. But in, in closing of this, and thank you so much for sharing your heart, who you are and where you're going, the little kind of drips and drabs of what's coming in your life. I'm excited to see that. I ask everybody this question. Today, in this moment, as we sit here and have this conversation and you just woke up, what does love mean to Raquel? Love starts right here. So um, it's impossible to give love or get love until you find it within. So do whatever you have to do, any kind of soul searching, I recommend um, meditation and always uh, exercise and um, seeking out your passion and what you want in life and it brings you closer to yourself. Um, and then children teach us that, you know, um, but that, that's where it starts. So whatever, like I said, you have to do to find that I had to learn to love myself uh, despite the way I grew up.
feeling like I wasn't enough, you know, so right. that worked. And then I want to have my um, other half say oh, hello. Yeah. Because he's a big part of. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. How are you? Hi, Danny. Like, <laughs> I know. I know. I, I That's what I was saying. I haven't shaved for a month. <laughs> I like the beard. Do you well, like the beard, Raquel? It's so totally different. How are you? Good, good. You know, living life, keeping myself busy, because if I'm not busy. Yeah, I see you're busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I got to figure out things to do, or it will yeah. not be good over here. We would all be so fat because I would be baking up a storm. That would, that'd that be all I do. So I see a lot of friends baking. Oh, my God. These gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Wow. They're yeah. like making bunnies and <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not that I'm not that fancy. I mean, the, the pictures look better, but they taste delicious. But uh, anyway, so yeah. But I can't wait to come out there and see you guys oh, and you know, uh, yeah. just keep being you. That is it. Just keep doing you. Oh, she's great. What a great she interview. Is. Love the interview. Well done, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, I love you and uh, everybody. Mm -hmm. Until next time, love hard and love pure. And we will see you. Ciao.